What's going on, nerds? Welcome back to Comic Book Nerd Nation, episode number 61. I'm Fox 2. We got the whole crew here today. We got Pirate. Hey, guys. Tover. Hey, guys. And the whole effing Brian. I am Brian. <laughs> I don't. Are you trying out for a cheerleader squad or. Let's go. <laughs> Give me a B. Comics. B. Give me an R. <laughs> R. Give me an I. I. Oh my god, you guys are eight up. Okay, um, <laughs> I don't know how to start after that. Let's start with uh, tabletop game of the week. How about that? Um, wow. Yeah, we'll just jump right in. Way to force it right in, Doug. I'm gonna force it in there <laughs> on you. Um, so Topher, you want to talk about the game tabletop game of the week? All right, so uh, so Fox suggested one that I happen to have like pretty much in arm's reach of my my couch here. Candyland is oh. well, no, that's that's only for the special company. That's um... okay. This is getting anyway. Weird now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Ticket to Ride, um, and Ooh. this game's been out for a while. It's it's not it's not exactly new. There are a whole bunch of different versions of it now. It's, this is what it was, it won the German Game of the Year award in 2004. So I mean, it's been around a while, but um, it's gotten pretty popular lately. Basically, the idea of the game is what? What are you laughing about? <laughs> what are you laughing about, John? <laughs> You're already cracking up. Uh, <laughs> with a train on the Fubu. with a train on the cover, I feel like that would be in the German Game of the Year. During 1940. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is bad. This is spinning out of control quickly and early, or very early. Oh, God. Back to the game. I still want to know why Pirate's laughing. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, don't, don't worry about me. Just proceed. <laughs> <laughs> the motherfucker is over there. He's going to lose it, dude. He's about to pee his pants. Oh. Oh, Carry on with your with your ticket to ride there. Go ahead. Right. I got oh. a ticket to ride. I think that should have been a, this game, with that, that title. I should. Hand. I think that should have been the tabletop game of the week during episode sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Now what? you can go on. I'm totally gonna, you're scratching there a bit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Um, so anyway, this isn't a uh, this isn't like a terribly complicated game. This isn't your usual like you know nerd store twenty hour you know risk strategy game. Um, basically, the idea is you got a you got a game board, and um, there's all these different pathways connecting all these different cities in the United States um, with uh, with different rail lines. And um, as the turns go around, you, you draw cards, and they, they correspond to different colors um, that are color-coded to the different railways. And they, the idea is you have to, you know, try and uh, connect as many cities as you can, and you get points for, you know, connecting two cities that, that you have a card for and, and for having the longest, you know, connected railroad and, and all of this stuff. And it, it plays pretty quickly. Um, it's, it's a very light strategy game. It's like, you know, kids can play it. It's a family-friendly game. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. I like it. That's about all I got. It's um, <laughs> just some of the details about the game or whatever, other than how it's played. Uh, it's made by a company called Days of Wonder. Um, it's for two to five players. Playtime takes about 30 to 60 minutes. And you can get it on Amazon uh, for $36.99. And if you have Sweet. Amazon Prime, you can get two-day free shipping. So there's Sweet. that. It is it is a really fun game. It's, it's another one um, kind of like we talked about with Pandemic yesterday. Like when you are playing those heavy heavy strategy games that take six seven eight hours to complete this is another one of those shorter kind of a mental break games that you could play between two sessions of uh of of more difficult games so this is this one i really um now that i know that topher has it actually i'm gonna be probably begging him to come over and play it so there's that Ooh, doug so, wants topher's yeah. ticket to ride Right. You got your ticket to ride right here. Yeah, anybody noticed how Red Hulk pirate got before? <laughs> how Red Hulk? Yeah. 
All right, let's talk about um, let's talk about what we've been reading this week. Let me just start this off with a blanket statement or question: Have any of you read anything else this week? Uh yeah, I kind of read something this week. Topher. Um, comics. Yeah. Oh no! The only thing I've read this week are the uh, Diablo three patch notes for version two point one point two, because apparently they changed my Demon Hunter and had to relearn how the hell to spec, and that's pretty much all I did this week. I need to get on there and play some uh, hashtag nerd problems. Some Diablo, <laughs> right? Nerd life. You know, I was here in. Um, I have some friends. We'll we'll venture out into the Diablo realm real quick here. But I was talking to some friends that actually they played Diablo three on um, on PlayStation four, and they said it's basically not even playable anymore because of the amount of hacked items that are out there, where people are like getting. <clears throat> I don't understand exactly how it works, but uh, the one guy said somebody came up to him, dropped this sword, he used it, you you kill one enemy and you get like ten million experience. So it just like it just like jumps your levels like crazy far right from gameplay value. Ryan's dying over there. Yeah, I know. No. Yeah, I, I feel like there. that would completely ruin the the game as far as I mean. The whole point of Diablo three is to like grind through and play over and over and over and find loot drops to get better well, gear. But it's but... it's it's kind of a you know it's a it's a fun game that you can just jump in and play quickly by yourself or with a group of friends but it's a, it's a team thing like there's not really a competitive thing to it so i don't i don't get why it would ruin it if some other dude like you know unless unless the only way you have fun with the game is by telling other people how they can have fun with the game and there are a lot of those people online you know but i mean somebody else's gear doesn't really affect you so yeah well that's that's a good point until they if they ever come out with player versus player but I don't they know. have arena. They have they they have arena on PS3. Oh, do they? Where you can play uh, really? PVP. Yeah. Can someone, can someone tell me why my cat keeps trying to shove his paw in my face? Because he to the doesn't like you. That's gonna be my I first. Know, he's probably trying to. He probably says like, you're hey, closer than he is. Hey, so hey pay attention to me. Hey, pay attention to me. Wow, that is annoying. Yeah. Uh, all right, wants Brian, attention. What if? Uh, what have uh, what have you been reading this? One, week? Uh, this week, one I of read... us before this podcast is over <laughs> should probably talk about comics. Yes, that's a good point. <laughs> um, this week, I read um, American Vampire. Yeah, seriously, I read American Vampire Volume Four, which basically, if anybody's ever read American Vampire, basically started out. Is in... that the one after American Vampire Volume Three? Yes. And between okay, I, I and, think I might have read that one before Volume Five. Oh wait, did I read? Maybe it's... no, I read American Vampire <laughs> Volume Five. Now that we think about it, <laughs> um... <laughs> what did you just get confused about? I don't know. I said Volume Four, and then you said that, and then I was like, wait, <laughs> it's Volume Five that I read, not Volume Four this week. It basically takes place in the 1950s, and this group of vampire hunters are being attacked by a certain group of vampires, or a certain, I should say, race or species of vampires, because they have the oldest of their kind in a vault, which happens to be their version of Dracula, and they attack... A whole shitload of stuff happen, and they start looking for the ancient vampires, which is the first species of vampires in Scott Snyder's little world of American Vampire. And um, it's a pretty good book. A lot of action, a lot of people getting fucked up, and plus Scott Snyder wrote it. He is which a seems, good writer. I'm yeah, sure. which seems like he does a lot of books that aren't his DC books that aren't from DC are based on it seems like monsters he has witches that are com that's coming out now American Vampire he's still writing he did The Wake which is about his take on mermaids I think or sea creatures um I know he did a 
other book, but I'm not sure if that has like the supernatural element to it. But it seems like he does a lot of uh, like supernatural creature books when he's not doing bat besides Batman. But I suggest everybody pick up American Vampire. Re- at least read the first volume. Get hooked. Yeah. The first, read that I got shit. The first, I think three or four, and I've read. I haven't read the fourth one, but I read. No, I've read the first two, and they're really good. Um, it's Silver, the guy. Yeah, he's Silver in the first one. The one vampire who like can come out in like the day or something like that. The Skinner Sweet. He's my favorite like villain. Yeah. Yeah, I thought his name was Silver. Yeah, Skinner Sweet. Yeah, he's in the, uh, or maybe it's Silver that they call him in the second one when he's like the mob leader, like the gangster. He's like a groundskeeper, or like some old dude. If you get it, he like was groundskeeper uh, Willie. Yeah, no, he was he was the the cowboy, the robber, the stagecoach robber guy. Yeah. 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 He's but each in the beginning of each volume, they tell you a little bit more of his background. Like in volume three, they tell you how he knows um, Sheriff Book, the guy that's always following him, trying to capture him in the first two volumes and stuff like that. She- Shepherd Book, the guy from Firefly? Yeah, he died. <laughs> Spoiler alert if anybody hasn't watched Serenity. I have not seen Firefly or Serenity. <sighs> I know, I'm doing it wrong, Chris. I didn't say anything. I know. You've said it enough times I can speak I for can't you. Believe somebody, I can't believe somebody can't just sit down and watch Firefly. Yeah. Just I know. It's only like... It's the best one season show. And then they canceled it. Yeah, I need to do it. I need to... As is long as you know you're doing it, it wrong, yeah. then... Is it you know, still on Netflix? reminding you. I think so. Yeah? Yeah. That was the last time I looked. I'll have to watch it, I guess. <laughs> What, uh, is that all you've been reading, Brian? That's all I've read so far. Okay. And we covered Topher. Pirate, you said you have not read anything, correct? Uh, no. I did not. Okay. Even though I said I was going to all day last Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and then like and then you spent it on completely hungover. Yeah, I had one of those hangovers that just, Wouldn't it's like quit. a biblical portion. You know what I mean? Like, it could have been one of the fucking plagues of ancient Egypt. Like the whole but, fucking country is covered with a hangover. But we did beat Contra, so. But yes, that. yes. Well, Topher beat Contra. I'm more like <laughs> the enemy by catching How all their How long did bolts. that take you to beat Contra? <coughs> Which time? Because I went back, back and did it. Because I went back and did it a second time while I was waiting for another beer. <laughs> really? Yeah. We played Gauntlet until my fucking shit might think like, something happened and I just disappeared, but we was getting up there on that one too. You probably play that I could probably play that entire game, beat it straight through in what, fifteen, twenty minutes, maybe tops. Probably. If that. Yeah, fifteen minutes. That's yeah. ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. That's ridiculous. So to explain quickly, uh there's a brewery local to us, um, that has really good beer, but they also have what, what like five, six uh, they got, more yeah, they got some arcade games now. Arcade games that are uh, all for free, free play to play. In the tap room. Yeah. Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter 2, the NES one that's got a bunch of different games, like House of the Dead. I mean, it, they're not like, you know, the newest or nothing like that, but they're yeah, the, fun, the ones when we was kids, you know. They're the old ones that are fun. <laughs> through that um so that, this week um as far as what i've been reading none of that newfangled ddr dance <laughs> Re- resolution yeah, I that game newfangled Nonsense. i can imagine i can imagine whole and brian playing some ddr yeah <laughs> give me my silver shoes the taps all right um so this week i read um oh gosh i read quite a few uh green lantern new guardians um which is still kind of following the the wrap-up or post story from the giant godhead crossover um it's good i mean i like all the green lantern stuff i was pretty let down by the godhead um ending yeah but the rest of it was good um supergirl um number 38 i think the number um it's 
basically still following the same storyline where she's going to school at um, this um, crucible academy that pulls the best or most powerful people from each race um, and trains them to try and bring peace to the to the universe and it's pretty good storyline so far from from what I've you know what I've been picking up um, they're bringing Superboy into it um, for an unknown reason yet the crucible wants to capture him so we have to find out <clears throat> probably in the next two issues I would say uh, about what that's going on uh, Batman Eternal is it's Batman Eternal. It's really good. Um, if you're, again, if you're not reading that, then you are doing it wrong. Um, In the butt. Um, <laughs> one of my favorites right now is Justice League. Uh, it's the it's the Amazo virus um, storyline. So Batman now has, if you're following this, the Amazo virus can give non superhumans superpowers before killing them. And if you are a superhuman, it takes away your superpowers before killing you. That so seems like dying of... after sex. <laughs> yeah, superpowers. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I suppose. I, yeah, I guess. Um, it's it's a great story, but I don't know exactly where they're heading with it because towards the end, like the last page or two, basically all of the superheroes are now turning into like these zombie type characters that they almost they almost look like uh black hands black rings mm -hmm. or black lanterns i mean so i don't know i don't know exactly where that's gonna go and then i read batman superman um which it's a good book was a yeah the, it's really good it's following um a pretty interesting storyline i'm a little confused on it, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. So I need have to you, go back and read a little bit more. Have you read all of the Batman and Superman? I have not. I kind of came in. Okay. I came in pretty late. Yeah, it, like a wrecking it's a, it's a ball. Book, dude, like <sighs> from the beginning, every three or four, like you'll read one like issue and you'll be like, "Oh, that's cool." And the next issue will be like, "What the fuck are they talking about?" And like, because there's actually it's like starting out. There's four of them. Mm -hmm. There's you know young <clears throat> Superman. Superman, Young Batman, Old Batman. It's like it's 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 a confusing book, dude. Starting out, but it's it's really good though. Once it kind of gets around, like you know, set. like the Bruce Willis movie where he faces his younger self. Oh, uh, Looper. No, Looper. and there's another one where he's with his like kid self. Oh, speaking uh, of Bruce Willis, did you see there's a Twelve Monkeys? Twelve TV Monkeys. Show? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, we went the same place with that. Yeah. Um, Shut up. Then the last uh, the last thing I read this week was um, the new Batman and Robin, so this is like a follow up to from uh, from where Robin got brought back to life. Damian Wayne um, got back, brought back to life after being um, dead on Apocalypse, and somehow through that process, I don't know I don't know that it's really been covered how it happened, but somehow through that process, he's gained superpowers which seem to be fairly similar to Superman. Um, he can fly, he has super strength, and he um, bullets don't hurt him. So it's it's kind of an interesting read just because it's so different for a Batman character to be, you know, to, to be uh, a superhuman, period. Because all of them are just average people that work really hard and, and have incredible skills. But it's it's really interesting to see the the conflict between um, Damien and Batman because you know Batman still thinks he shouldn't use his superpowers even though he has them because he feels like it's an unnecessary risk he should still you know fight the fight the way that that they had already been doing it but he wants to just like walk directly up to armed gunmen and like take thirty rounds to the chest to scare them and everything like that so batman gets all upset it's pretty it's pretty good if you're uh you know if you're a fan of the bat family you should definitely check that one out so Does he lecture superman that way um i feel like probably <laughs> that's just how he rolls that's how he rolls motherfucker 
I mean, Superman's not he's not Superman's not his son too. That's a very valid point you <clears> there. <throat> Is your dad lecture other kids on you know like things that he doesn't think they do right? I don't know that he would want you to do different. Just, just saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> My dad doesn't. My dad don't really give two shits. What my friends do. <laughs> you want to be an idiot? Go be a fucking idiot. <laughs> Let, let's, uh... So, so next week instead of the board game of the week, we should have the the podcast technology feature of the week, and we can highlight the mute button up at the top of the screen that can keep people from hearing you cough and and hack up a lung and snot all over yourself. I'm on a cell phone. I can't. I can't. You can see my finger doing all of. <laughs> Uh, okay. I should just drop the mic. We could do, we could be <laughs> like do oh, episode dick out of the week. <laughs> Topher dick wins comment. again! I was going to say, <laughs> should I let somebody else have a turn at some point, or... It's too bad you can't hear my farts, though. Oh, uh... Alright, let's talk about news. I think this is what uh, what everybody has been mm. kind of waiting to get to. The biggest news of the month or the week. Yeah, let's um, let's lead into that. Let's let's start by talking about um, Supergirl was cast for the CBS TV show. This is probably one of the smaller uh, bits of news um, for the week. It's Melissa Ben Benoist. Is that Ben Ben Gay Benoit? Ben Wast uh, Ben Watts. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how you pronounce it. It looks French, but you know, for all we know, I'm I'm interested to see how they how they do success wise with the the Supergirl TV show because if if they can manage to do well with the demographic that they're trying to go after, which are obviously you know like probably like what ten to twenty five year old women somewhere in that ballpark. So so basically we get a show now that we don't have to stare at some dude's abs for half of it. Yeah. I hope she's shirtless in the first whole season. Whatever. Stephen Amell <laughs> hot. <laughs> Topher's never going to watch the second season of Mary. He's just going to watch the Bowflex commercial <laughs> over and over again. Bowflex. I like how he does those chin-ups all the way up. Oh, God. I can just picture, I just picture Topher, or uh, not Topher, Brian, standing there in the, in the arrows, like, lair, while he's doing the, doing the, uh, salmon ladder, or whatever it's called, like, salmon the, ladder. what's it called, the fucking, it's salmon ladder, I don't, yeah, no, I, no it's, no, it's uh, called something like that, it's I not almost even call it that it's like the, uh, this, um, fuck, I don't know, the chin-up thing where he jumps yeah. the bar up, Anyway, yeah. I can yeah. just see Brian like standing right underneath of him, looking up at him while he's doing that shit. Like <laughs> <clears throat> green arrow, he's getting, he's got green arrow balls just bouncing off his forehead or something. Brian, Brian's hand like keeps constantly like like one of these like I touch I touch him. <laughs> does he does he need help? I don't, you need a boost spotter. I'm a spotter. I'm a spotter. Spot I'm a spotter. I've got you. <laughs> Brian is not amused. Uh. He he walks over, looks at him, rubbing his leather pants, hanging up on that display case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, next bit of news. <laughs> Moving on. Brian and Tover have a seriously dry sense of humor today. It's terrible. Uh, I go flat. You know. X Men Apocalypse. Characters are cast. <clears throat> Sophie Turner from uh, Game of Thrones, who is Sansa Stark? Stark. Sansa Stark, Stark in Game of Thrones will be playing Jean Grey. Ty Sheridan from the movie Mud will be playing Cyclops. Mud butt. And Alexandra Ship will be playing Storm. So we'll, we'll go to Topher. What do you think about this? This is clearly your, you know, this is what gives you tea. wood for sure. Um, I don't, I don't know two of the three. Um, I mean, they look like I, they could maybe do it, so I don't really have an opinion one way or the other. From what I've read, they, they all look young they apparently to me. are, yeah, I mean, they are, but that's, that's kind of what they're going for, so, um, you know, I, I, 
what I from what I've read about them, they they seem like decent actors. Um, so, yeah, I I I don't really have much of an opinion beyond that. Um, the only the only one I really know is um, is uh, the Sansa Stark, um, and she's she's always been such a, a meek character so far in Game of Thrones, um, but. I, I think I think if she actually had like you know a little bit of more more presence to her character, I like when when they said they were gonna announce who you know uh, who was gonna play, um, fuck Teen Gray, um, I'm like kind of half out of it today. Uh, <laughs> when they said they were gonna announce who it was, I'm like I'm like oh god, like they're gonna pick some random kid and it's gonna like I'm gonna hate it, and they picked her and I was like, ooh. Okay, yeah, I I can get behind that. I can deal with that. So now I'm I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. I bet she dies this season. You think in so? Game of Thrones. Yeah, George R. I, I mean, he, he, she she's in a new movie now. He's got her in the crosshairs. She may get the well, X. See, the thing is though, like their shooting schedule for that is, I mean, they they shoot within a a couple months and then they're done for the rest of the year. And I mean, shooting for a filming for a movie doesn't take an entire year. So I mean, there's there's plenty of time in her schedule to do both. Next season she dies in. All right, I'll give you your point. She dies. <laughs> yeah, I don't, they all die. I don't think it's, it's think Game of Thrones. They're all good. Yeah. Game of Thrones, they're all going to die sometime. No one can take a role in another movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Brian is dying over there. Seriously. I have the, the T-virus. The T-virus? The T-virus. Oh. All right, I guess. Uh, all right, on to the big news. This is what everybody has been wanting to talk about. You can see the look on Topher's face. He's excited. Uh, Marvel's announcement to end all announcements. Topher, take it away. You're the Marvel nut hugger. <clears throat> nut hugger. You make it sound so. Who's positive. nuts are those? <clears throat> what characters nuts would they be? Uh, so Stanley. Galactus. Uh, so Marvel announced this uh, j- big Secret Wars crossover that's coming up in uh, in the spring, and the the big announcement here is that. Um, well, first to provide a little history, uh, Jonathan Hickman's New Avengers series, since Marvel Now started a couple years ago, um, they've been telling a story about how something went wrong <clears throat> in, in somebody did something bad in, on Earth that fucked up space-time, and so they caused this, this weird thing where the multiverse is collapsing. So you have all these different parallel universes <clears throat> and it's all collapsing in on each other and they're all smashing together. And so they call them incursions. And what happens is you get two universes that come together at the incursion point, which is Earth. And if both Earths if both Earths collide, then both of their entire universes are destroyed. But if one of the Earths is destroyed before they collide, then both universes are saved for the time being until you know the next one of infinite universes decides to smash into it. Um, so, so the Illuminati have been dealing with that for the last couple of years, trying to figure out you know do we do we have what it takes to blow up another planet to save our own? Um, it's actually been a really good storyline. Um, it's been way better than his Avengers book, which the whole builder's story I didn't really care for um, but uh, so so secret wars then um, is going to be the the story of the incursion between the regular Marvel universe and Marvel's ultimate universe so like ultimate spider-man miles Morales um, you know they started the ultimate line in like 2000 I want to say um, and they've done all these separate stories and Miles Morales is pretty much the only good thing that ever came out of it but they're they're trying to bring everything together mm-hmm. and so <laughs> I just knocked his phone over <laughs> um, he, he's like maybe this button <laughs> um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> So the so the first issue of Secret Wars is going to be the incursion, um, the the final incursion between 
um, Marvel 616, the main Marvel universe and the ultimate universe, and the Earths are going to come crashing together. And the big news here is that they don't manage to stop it, and the two Earths collide, and they're the Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Universe, as of Secret Wars, officially no longer exist. The universes are destroyed. The only thing that's left is this smashed together planetoid of, you know, fragments of all these other alternate universes that have come crashing together at the incursion point and form this new battle world. And so they, uh, they've got a, a map on their... Um, They've got a map on their uh, website, on Marvel's website, that shows you all the different like regions that make up this this planet, and um, and I don't know what's going to happen from there, but you know the the rest of the story is going to be the aftermath of you know the the universe getting destroyed. So so after Secret War, the Marvel universe is no more. Um, it's not exactly a reboot because the characters, I mean. In theory, it's still the same characters. They still lived their lives. They still have all their same history, but it's kind of a big reset button in that. Well, shit, there isn't even a Marvel universe anymore. You like, know what there's it no. Is? It's they, not a they reboot, said... but what it is is a giant reason for Marvel to unleash a hellstorm of number one issues. That oh, yeah, is what it is. Yeah, <clears throat> that's so, all. You know, and, and they've. And they've had a ton of those reasons before, but I mean, this is yeah. But I now mean, it they really can do is them all unlike, at once. Now everything can right. be number one. It really is unlike anything they've ever done before. So um, I'm I'm actually kind of curious to see what they're going to do with this because, like, they they said that there's there's this battle world, there's the the, the planet, and outside of that is just void. It's not like a planet in in the in the universe. It's not. You know, there's not something out there. There's just literally nothingness. It's a void. To... All there is is Battle World, and like the Marvel Universe is destroyed. So, like, what happened to Earth? Like, are there civilians on Battle World? Did cities survive? Like, you know, they're at that point, do it at some are, point because otherwise they're getting they... rid of their galactic universe. Yeah, that's yeah, what you know, like, it's like what happens to that? Well, there's. There's a, there's a country, you know, like New Hala or something, which is the capital of the Kree Empire. <laughs> and there's going to be, there's another one called, uh, there's another one that they've labeled New Xandar. Um, Xandar was the, the, the system that the Nova Corps is from. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be incorporating a lot of the galactic stuff. Uh, please bring Planet back side, Rider. it looks like, right? And, um, you know, but... It's I, I don't know how that's gonna work because yeah like what about Galactus if there's just void there's no Galactus anymore I mean Galactus is well what happens to the negative zone because if you read the um the book where Galactus comes through the universe into the ultimate universe after that I think they sent them into the negative zone or something Cataclysm yeah and I didn't yeah. read I don't read any of the ultimate stuff but um so I don't I don't really know what goes on there but yeah like I I don't you know, are are the are the heroes of all the comic books like you know are they still heroes to a world full of normal people or are they pretty much the only people left? You know, like I I don't know. Like and at that point, if if there's not if 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 you don't have the same status quo, if you don't have like real world Earth anymore, like. I guess you can go off and you can tell all kinds of new stories that you couldn't tell before, um, but you're also not beholden to this move sliding timeline and and you know like moving people's origin stories newer and newer because well, Battle World isn't following Earth anymore. So I mean, everything's that, not going to. I guess that gives them a little New bit. City. Yeah, it gives them a little bit of freedom there, but at the same time, it's like. What does any of it mean? You know, I mean, like, do do the X Men still have a school? You know, is there any point in in training people how to fit in in the world? Is there, you know, is there even a a, a racial division between humans and mutants? You know, like what oh, wow. what? So it's like, I it just makes me wonder, like, what? You know, they're 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 they've obviously got a new starting point. But I just wonder how much they're going to shake up, like the core of what these books have always been. You know, like not or, much, or, probably. No, yeah. I, I doubt so, much. So, to me, so it feels I, like a giant marketing ploy. To be honest, with oh you. yeah. Well, it's always going to be that. But I mean, to, Topher brings up some good points. It's though. it's a, it's a company. Everything's going to have marketing around it. Like the every event has always had marketing. Like I I 
Like, I, I understand what you're saying, but every time you start talking about this, you don't sound any better than John's poop, 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 poop comments about the DC films. You mean, you mean Brian's? Yeah, that's mine. Or Get that fucking right. right. Brian, whatever. No, I mean, I, like, there's definitely Marvel stories that I, I like and, and, and stuff that I enjoy about Marvel, but it seems to me that, like... Like you said, how are you going to take all of this? <clears throat> if you look at it from a different perspective, okay? How is a superhero a superhero if there are no civilians for them to be saving? If there is no weak, then there's no need for the powerful to be a hero. Because then everyone Brandon, can what's... everyone can take care of themselves. When a hero so comes without along. without the need for for a superhero, what is the there is no interesting story. There's no danger of a supervillain killing massive amounts of civilians or anything like that. There's only superhero versus supervillain. So now it literally is just basically a glorified cage fight. Between, That's what Secret War has always been. That's what it know, was. I mean, I, right, exactly. But what I'm saying is, like, how long can you string that out before you have to then again hit the reset button of some sort and go back to the status quo. And that's what I feel like they're doing is they're doing just like we talked about with death of Wolverine. Okay. We said, okay, Wolverine's going to die, but how long is he really going to be dead? You know, until this new universe starts. Exactly. And so if, if he's coming back, it's, this is basically the same thing with their entire universe. They're talking about, okay, we're going to go to this universe because of this giant cataclysm event and then, or I'm sorry, incursion event, and then how long can you do just simply hero versus, like superhero versus supervillain with no um, uh, collateral damage, so to speak, as far as like human death or, or, or you know, average people in there to kind of give some it weight to the scenarios? Threat. You know, I, I don't know. But you don't know either. If you did, you'd be a comic book writer. You know, I mean, like, like we don't know where they're going with it. I like, I understand what you're saying, and they're all, you know, they're all definitely things to think about and consider and wonder about. But like, I don't think we can sit here and, and condemn them and say, you no, know, like, I'm not oh, it's going to be temporary. Like, read it. like, like we how are long? And, them to like, battle it's world. it's all going to be new number ones. And and I've I've bitched myself about the whole you know lots of number ones things. But the fact is, you know, they've found out that number ones are what sells. And to stay in business, they have to sell comic books. Like it's still a business. They're not doing it, you know, just for the art form. So you know there are going to be things like that. And as comic book fans, we have to deal with that. You know, like and and when you're reading the story, do you sit there and go? Oh man, this story would have been so good if it had like number four hundred and seventy two on the cover, but they changed it to number one. Fuck this. You know, like no. Like yes. it doesn't matter what number the book is at the end of the day, like as long as they're telling a good story. And they've had the status quo for fifty years now, and now they're trying to do something different. Even if it doesn't stay that way for what's the problem with doing something like that? Like everybody bitched about like the whole Spider Man Doc Ock thing, the superior Spider Man. And you know, and you can argue that it's, it wasn't, you know, the best Spider Man plot line ever, but it was different. It was something and you knew it was gonna go back. You knew Peter Parker wasn't gonna stay locked up inside, you know, Doc Ock's head forever. But it was a way to tell different stories for a while, and and that's what comic books have always done. Like, look at Civil War. Yeah, there were there were two factions fighting. There were you know the pro registration, the anti registration. Then you had you know then you had Norman Osborn taking over um, you know the the country for a while and running the initiative and running all these superhero teams all over. And it's like how long is that going to last? Nothing ever lasts. Everything goes back Not to the status quo at some point, you know, but. It's a way to tell a story in the meantime. Like it doesn't matter where it's, like it, it's the end game here is not the goal. It's about the story they tell along the way. I mean, comic books are like kind of an endless franchise. You know, like there's the whole point is to tell these ongoing stories. You know, there's they, they, there's a reason they don't kill off their main characters permanently. There's a reason they don't say, you know what, we're writing the end of this and we're starting something entirely new and we're completely giving up on all those. Because people like those characters and they want to come back to that. Like, if, if they were going to write an ending to comic books, then, you know, they could do that. But 
in the meantime, if comic books are going to go on forever, you need different means of telling stories. I, I mean, I don't, dis- I don't disagree with you, but at, at the same time, at what point does doing something different for the sake of doing something different cheapen what they're doing? That's all I'm saying. Is I think they need it from a collector's perspective, or does it cheapen from a, a of a of no, a, from a story perspective, not from a not from a collector's perspective? Because here's my thing. But how do you how do you judge that though? Like what what? Okay, you could go back anything they've done different in the in the history of comics. You could say you know oh they were just doing that to be they weren't doing it to write a good story. They were just doing it to do something different. You could levy that argument against every single story arc for the last 30 years. I mean, I agree. There's plenty of them. And some of them went extremely well. And some of them went extremely bad as well. Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron was awesome. Do you... Do you want to read the same story over and over and over again? No, but yeah, they need a new slate. They needed to wipe it clean. But this isn't a clean slate either, though. That's what I'm saying. Is like, well, yeah, it's not yes like no. If if you're that concerned I... with needing a fresh a fresh slate to start with some fresh stories and stuff, why not do a reboot and start fresh where you can grassroots level change everything that you want to what. You know, to however you From, want, you can just start over. And well, that would be something to, that would be changed just for the sake of change too. You're throwing away everything, and you're just, uh, fuck it, we'll just start over again. Like, how is that a good story? What that's they, just, well, I mean, they've been they, doing they, that. They've like, been you doing can argue already. the same thing. You can argue that you can say the same thing about that. And in, in fact, you are that's so that horribly instead. defensive over Marvel. It's incredible. No, I, I'm not. <laughs> Marvel's been doing that. I mean, they erased Peter Parker's most of Peter Parker's history when he made that deal with Mephisto. I mean, him and Mary Jane got broken up and stuff. I mean, they've been wiping, you... trying to wipe little clean slates and shit, and that's the worst one. That's what I hope comes out of one of the things I hope come out of Battle World that Mary Jane and Peter Parker are married again. Yeah, they. Um, you were going to say something to the pirates? Actual... Um, I can't remember. Besides uh, R, I got I got overtalked. Couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> but Axel like... Alonso even pointed to uh, you know an issue like there's there's a there's a renew your vows uh, yeah. Spider Man cover with him and Mary Jane with uh, their daughter on the cover too. No, I, you know I'm not defending them. I'm not saying that like oh it's going to be awesome. I don't know. What I'm saying is we can't judge it yet. It hasn't <laughs> happened. And saying, you know, why don't the, why didn't they just wipe it clean and do a fresh reboot? Like to me, that's not any better. Like I don't care if it's Marvel doing it. I don't care if it's DC doing it. I hated it when DC did it. The whole New Fifty Two thing. Like and it still doesn't make sense. Like there's still characters whose timelines in there don't make a goddamn bit of sense. And guess yeah, what? True. You know, that's probably not going to last forever. This whole convergence thing. There's a lot of people that think yep. that they're going to restore the original DC universe. I agree. You know, that. so. So, like, I, I don't think pushing the reset button and, and creating a clean slate and totally rebooting and starting over is any better than finding a way like this to tell different stories. The, 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 end, the, the fact is you're still telling different stories, except in one, you're doing it with an in-universe reason that doesn't just say, eh, fuck your characters, these are new ones. You know, it's the same people, but we're retelling the stories, so everything about you know and loved about them for 50 years is changing. They're saying, yeah, all that stuff happened, but now we're going to tell different stories from a new starting point without you know, taking the creative cop-out of saying, uh, nope, that one's over, we're starting a new one. I mean, I guess I, guess I, see, where you're, I see where your point's coming from, but I, I don't know. I'm just not entirely sold on the whole idea of of all of these different universes colliding and then potentially just being a world of nothing but superheroes. Like, well, I, I don't, but it's I not going to stay like that forever. I, I never said, okay, they never said it was going to be a world only of superheroes. I was, that was me speculating and saying, like, oh, so what happens to the rest of the people? The like, that wasn't them saying like they like they didn't they didn't go into details on that like they didn't say anything about that it's just me wondering like you know the the only thing they said was uh they um they were talking about the um the Marvel universe and the Ultimate universe 
and and they said, imagine it's like taking two pizzas and slapping them together and then pulling them apart and, you know, some toppings end up on this one, some toppings end up on this one, some fall off and it gets messy, but you're left with some weird mix of the two. And I'm like, that's I like kind pizza. of an awkward analogy, but now I want some pizza. Um, Especially you know, so since, I mean, like, didn't they say there was only going to be one universe at the end of it? <laughs> Yeah, what so there's not going to be that. any universe. Both what? universes are destroyed. There's yeah. going to be just this Every battle world destroyed. and a giant void. So what I mean, I there are there are definitely things that seem gimmicky about it. You know, like they, they've got, you know, but is it cool or is it gimmicky? Is it gimmicky if you're playing to what you know you think your fans are going to geek out over? Like you know, like like putting um putting the Age of Ultron universe. There's like a you know country for for Age of Ultron right next to the Marvel Zombies universe. And there's going to be a book that's, you know, like a crossover, but like Ultron bots fighting, you know, the Marvel Zombies. And sure, that sounds like a gimmick and a way to sell books, but it also sounds kind of cool and I kind of want to read it, you know? So it's like, I don't, it's hard to tell, you know, I don't know that any of it's going to be good and I'm still really worried about like whether I'm going to like what they're doing with it or not. But until we actually read it. I don't right. know that you can now, say it, this was a gimmick start? or this was... Uh, okay. <clears throat> the, the uh, yeah, um, for free, free comic, comic Book Day, free comic book day this year, um, they're putting out a, a, a Secret Wars number zero that's going to be like a primer that kind of gives the history on the incursions and, and gives a whole big lead up to it and then, um, you know, kind of ends with the, the incursion happening between the <clears throat> 616 in the Ultimate Universe. And then so, Secret Wars number one starts the crossover event in sometime like, you know, that same month. So you... they're also, on Free Comic Book Day to add, they're also putting out a all-new, brand-new Avengers book, which shows you a look into the future and what's to come out of Battle World, the Earth that Battle World is has the conclusion of Battle World makes a whole new universe where it's the fresh, the new start, like a new 52. Like at the end of Flashpoint, when he runs into the Bat Cave, that started the new 52. Okay. They're putting out a book that's kind of like that. It shows you a glimpse into what's to come out of Battle World, with, and it's a new Avengers book, basically showing you that team and that world that is created from the results of Battle World. So Battle World to me seems like you're going to have this big planet. We already know where you're going to have this big planet. All these countries are are populated by different previous universes, Earths. And what's to come out of it at the end is a whole new Marvel universe that's not populated by the 616. It's going to be populated by different characters, heroes, and villains from what survived Battle World. So we could have, like, a Thor from this universe, Tony from 616, Cap Young again from another universe, from, like, the Civil War universe, that's one of the countries, a Hulk from maybe the Planet Hulk universe or World War Hulk universe, and it's gonna, that's what's going to populate this new Earth. So okay. this book, this Avengers book, is going to take a look into that. Okay. So basically we're getting the a, finale before... A, a glimpse of the beginning and the end. Yeah. I see. So, okay, so here's a question. Pirate, you're more of a DC guy. You read mainly DC stuff. Do you, does this, like, after hearing all this and hearing us talk about it and stuff, is this something that makes you want, like, does this draw your interest as a comic book fan? Like, are you interested in getting involved in this and reading this, or where does it, where um, does it leave you? I mean... Yes and no. Like, it, yes, it does get me involved because it's like, wow, you know, there's so much about Marvel that I don't know with the universe that maybe this is a good jump-in point to learn more. But it's not like New 52 was, where New 52 was kind of like if you didn't know anything about comics for DC, that's a good time to start because nothing else matters. It seems this like to has... Go well, this, this has, like, you know, it's got, it still holds all the backstory to, like, those individual characters. So, somebody coming in is still going to be lost. I think it's going to be well, interesting we, to see how they pull it and fuse them. I, I think in we Civil Wars, you'll be lost. 
I think when they restart the universe this new way, that they'll it'll be like the new fifty two. Like some things have happened and they'll talk about it like like in the new fifty two in the first Superman volume when Clark Kent's in the Daily Planet, there's newspaper articles behind him on the wall that says Superman dies and Superman lives. So somewhere he had died before. So this will be, to me, this will be the same thing. Like Civil War might have happened. Depending where they start this universe, Civil War might have happened. They might talk about it. Like we all know Blackest Night yeah. has happened. Yeah. According to New 52, Blackest Night had still happened, but how the time line is well, green in lantern 52 they, they, is kind of weird but they said green lantern and it wasn't affected no green lantern and batman were the two that that we know yeah. of the most that weren't affected the two big heroes right. i mean but, my, my my thing that i think on that is you know i think that it, if if a company like to me number ones i don't i don't buy number ones for for collecting purpose or anything like that. It, in my opinion, a number one, I don't even know if a number is one a new is story. a number one until issue three or four. You know what I mean? Like, because that's when the, whatever the change is and stuff like that, you know, more shit starts, you know, like there's a couple shock values in number one, but they're not, I wouldn't think number ones are great comics as far as if they're going to read an issue. You know, if you read an issue one, I think if you really, you know, two and three, you kind of have to read them all together. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's whatever. I mean, it's. Are you like, gonna like, read it? That's the that's the that's the bottom line. Are you gonna read it? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wait a little bit more until I hear. I'll probably wait until like Topher or Brian read it, and then depending on what they think of it, then I'll read it. The thing uh, is, whether it's whether it's good or not, it's probably going to be the biggest, you know, most important. Events that Marvel's had since Civil War. Yeah. Well, yeah. Agreed. I I want three things out of this. <laughs> One is Mary Jane and Spider Man to be together again. Two is I want a Wolverine back that does not have all his memories, because those to me were the best Wolverine stories when he was out searching the the little clues that he did have to find out what happened to him. And three, I want Richard job. Ryder back. Yes. But I want Richard Ryder back. I want the original Nova to be back. The only thing I want out of this is for things to not be as confused as fuck as they are in DC. Like, and it's it's not it's not against DC. Like, I read both. Like, I I tend to prefer Marvel, not because I think they're better. I just like them, you know, most of them better. Like, I'm more familiar with them. And it's, the reason is, even when they do a new Fifty Two, and I try and read some of these series, like, it's still like, well, wait, what happened? What didn't? It's still confusing as fuck, you know. So, I don't know. I just I just hope that when the dust settles, you know, if they end up going with this whole you know, like, there's a new universe formed, and there's all your favorite characters, but they're not necessarily the 616 versions. They're from alternate universes, you know, that remember different things, and things happen differently. Like, I just hope it makes sense, you know. I hope it follows. I hope it's not confusing. I hope the authors don't all start contradicting each other in every single book, making up their own shit. Like, I just... I hope that there's actually a plan because if there's a plan then that means you know that this wasn't just a gimmick that they you know there's a bigger purpose they're going somewhere if if it if it becomes some giant clusterfuck and you've got all these things where you know the characters don't know each other and don't you can't keep their history straight and don't, who, people don't remember who they've met and who they haven't and you know then at that point it'll be like it'll be pretty clear that yeah they were just doing this for for the sake of changing things up, and they had no idea what the fuck they were gonna do with it. They from that from that interview, they seem like they were leading to this the whole time for the past. I, oh, I mean, four yeah, years. they've been they've been leading up to this, and they've been planning this. The question is, you know, did they have an exit strategy? Do they have a clear thing of where they're going after this, or was it just a build up to fuck everything up and start over with not a whole lot of rules or a clear template on 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 what comes next yeah that could be that could get ugly let's 
let's put it to our viewers, see if we can get a, a discussion going in the comments section below this video. Uh, is this something that you're going to read? What do you? What are your opinions about the uh, the Marvel end of the Marvel universe, as as people are calling it? Um, I'm interested to see get get some more as many opinions as we can get. We should uh, we should put it up on the Facebook page too and, and see what people think. Um, some kind of poll or something. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. All right. Well, we know where Brian stands on this. Besides the burning sensation. <laughs> when you pee. All right. I told you. All right. Uh, that's about it for this week. Um, I'm Fox, too. We got Pirate. Hey, I'm out of here. Topher. Hey, I'm out of here. And the whole effing Brian. <laughs> was that was it supposed to be, like, musical? Hey, or was it a... hey I'm out of here. See you guys.